Hi, I'm Nicole. And I'm really passionate about life and yeah. really just living the best life that we have now. Get ready for the real estate show that takes you across the barriers and into the danger zone. That bitch in real estate podcast with your host, Tenacious T. That brings me to the five things you do on a daily basis. Yeah. Gratitude practice, morning ritual, spend time with your daughter, move your body, and sleep. Yes. Tell me a little bit more about moving. So for me, the movement is key in order to move the energy that's within our bodies because we're all energy. We're all energetic beings. Everything is made up of energy. Yes. And as more of us are awakening, we're realizing we're sensitive, yeah. we're feelers. And it's important that we're moving that energy that may get stagnant within our mm -hmm. body mm -hmm. or that's stored so we're no longer living from that place of that stagnant space and to try to simplify this a little bit yeah um, I, i've been trying to think of some different analogies yeah. when we're talking about a stagnant energy let's say that when you were 19 years old you got really really drunk and you did some things that you probably shouldn't have done but here we are 10 years later and you're still thinking about those things that maybe you shouldn't have done, which has created a negative energy within your body. Yeah. That is where your gifts come in. Yeah. That is where you try to move that energy, like you move your body and practice on a daily basis, out yeah. so that the right energy can come in. Is that correct? Exactly. Just really that. Or if you get in an argument with a partner, you mm -hmm. know, or with your child or something, and you just like noticing, like, I'm not myself. Yes. There's there's energy you've taken on or there's energy that's trapped or stagnant within your body that needs to move and be released. Yes. And sometimes that looks like, for me with breath work, doing breath work, it can look like screaming or sometimes it's me going in the bathroom or in my bedroom and <laughs> screaming in a pillow to move that energy. Yeah, that's, I've, uh, <laughs> I've done that a few that's times. Because that's all it is. <laughs> a few times, yes. And, and that's the thing. I feel like a lot of times we're like, well, we don't want to be mad in front of our children or yell or we don't want to feel this way. There's certain emotions yeah, that are not. deemed negative and yeah. all of that. And it's like, but we're human and we're, sh it's, a it's, really coming to this place of allowing ourselves to express these emotions in healthy ways. Yes. So as opposed to taking it out on somebody, a child, a partner, oh, I'm feeling really upset right yeah. now. Let me go scream in this pillow. I feel like I need to scream. Let me go sit in the car and listen to some modern classical. And then afterward, I'm going to go swimming or, you know, whatever it is exactly. to get you out of that anger. Right. Right. Yeah. And just it's all emotions are energy in motion. They just want to move through our mm -hmm. body. And when mm -hmm. we allow ourselves to move that energy and feel whatever we're feeling, that emotion, it dissipates so much quicker as opposed to when we stuff it down yeah. and think we feel like it's not safe to express this or we're judging ourselves mm -hmm. for having this emotion. Yep. That keeps perpetuating that same cycle to come back up. Yeah. And that's when you lash out at somebody or that's when you you're not honoring yourself yeah. ultimately. And yeah. that is showing up in all areas of your life. If mm -hmm. you're not honoring yourself to express yourself, what you honestly feel, then where are you not being all of yourself in all of your life? And you're not allowing yourself to receive what you can receive. You're not attracting the ideal clients or partners to you because you're not being all of you. Yes. And you're a highly educated woman. You've worked with doctors, entrepreneurs, um, speakers, authors, professionals. And it's not like, you know, they may seem like they have it all together, but they have energy <laughs> that they need to move out. Exactly. So it's it's not just the the entrepreneur, but the the smaller, let's say, person that was working at the grocery store and yeah. has these desires just to live a joyous life. They don't they don't need to be some sort of famous person. They exactly. just want to get through that day and live in joy. That is your gift. Hmm. Right. Thank you. Yeah. 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 It is because we all have emotions mm -hmm. and these are things that we can all incorporate into our lives with the moving and that moving can be dancing. It can just be stretching, yeah. can be going for a run or working out, but just something where you're consciously connecting to your body yes. and taking that time 
to move that energy. And sometimes it looks like just shaking it all out, yeah. like, you know? Yes. <laughs> so flower essences. Yeah. Um, uh, I think you do uh, You do the singing bowls. And uh, tell me your different modalities that yeah. you use right now. So flower essences is one. Breath work is another. Um, I use tuning forks as well. Oh, yes. Tuning forks. <laughs> I haven't tried that yet. I might have to give you a call. Tuning forks are amazing. <laughs> uh, crystals essential oils uh, other types of plant medicine those I mean those are probably which they're pretty universally known yeah the commonality again though is breath work yeah breath work seems to be key to everything yeah when it comes to connection how did you learn about breath work who it was a few, it was actually right before I got pregnant with my daughter, I went to a conference that one of those things, a girl that was in my life coaching class <laughs> a, few, a year or two before had partnered with her, ran into her somewhere and she was yeah. like, hey, do you want to come to this event? And I was like, okay. And it was about <laughs> Qigong and breath work. Nice. And I had no clue what those things were yeah. at the time, but I'm like, I'll go. Let's go. Let's yeah. look. Gong, Qi Gong, what? Right? What is this? I'm <laughs> yeah. like, how do you spell that? Yeah. What? Isn't that Qui Gong? Like, I don't do karate, okay? Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I went and I remember the breathwork process they took us through. I was, I felt high, yeah. so high. And yeah. I didn't know that was possible without like any right. substances. And, and, and you're like, am I doing this wrong? I'm going to pass out, people. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. But I remember just having so much release from it as yeah. well. And I wanted to do it more. Mm -hmm. Yet I, a part of me felt like some resistance to it because it felt like, I mean, all of these things I was holding on to yes. that I hadn't processed, like starting to come up. Oh, boy. Yes. <laughs> but it's been the most freeing thing yeah. as well, because our breath is our lifeline. Like you may be able to go. You can go without food or water for a few days. You yeah. may feel like you can, but you can. You can. Yes. <laughs> but your breath, you cannot. It's no. your lifeline. And it has the power to help reset your whole nervous system. Yes. And it also has the power to get you wound up about things. And so like reconnecting to your breath slow deep breaths can just help you come to this place of calm of yeah. stillness of presence so you can actually receive the guidance that spirit the universe is trying to convey to you yeah. because so much of our society is this go 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 on to the next thing scheduling one thing right after the other and you just feel so rushed to where it's like you aren't even having that space to receive the guidance the, the white space the zero space and it, the, and it's doesn't it doesn't come easy. I think a lot of people think, okay, I'm going to sit down and here we go. <sighs> Where is it? It's not coming. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> you know. And and like an athlete, it it is it is something you have to practice. Yes, I'm trying to do it daily. I will just say that I'm get a few seconds in here and there, but it is very very difficult, and it's work. It is a lot it of work. Is work. There's there's times when I'm doing some breath work and I'm just sitting there going, I can't. I, there's no white. That's not. Where is it? It's just okay. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. It it is work, and that again is something that you can teach, that people can take anywhere with them. Exactly. You know, they may yeah. not have the flower essence, they may not have the tuning fork, but they can have the technique of breath work. Yes. What What would you say is is a usual amount of time before someone starts to understand what breath work is? What's the initial practice? If no one's ever done, like, say I've never done breath work before, right. how, how many classes or how many sessions before you feel confident enough that they can start really understanding what breath work is? Well, I definitely after one session, people are like, wow, holy shit, like this works. Yeah. Like I've been doing hypnotherapy and all of these things and I haven't had that much of a connection or release yeah. from that. But really, it's just like anything, you know, just doing it one time and never touching it again. It's yes. not going to support you. Yeah. But just having a consistent practice, even just taking deep breaths each day, like yeah. that's reconnecting you back to your breath. Yeah. Um, but like having where it's like a at least a weekly thing where mm -hmm. you take time to have like an uninterrupted breath session where you're in this active breathing state because the breath work isn't just 
Yeah. It's not relaxing. Like no. I'm just gonna no, be like, real. Okay, it's not. Oh, it's this is lovely. Yes. <laughs> it's it's a workout. It is. And it's active and it's uncomfortable mm-hmm. at times, mm-hmm. but it's helping you to move through the discomfort of life and to move through life so much more easy like more easily and be more grounded in all that you do to be more present, to be more connected and to, to be healthier. Yeah. Because your breath literally is oxygenating your body, your entire flooding your body with oxygen and disease cannot live in an oxygenated environment. So each time you're connecting with your breath, each time you're doing breath work, you're healing yourself. You're allowing the breath to heal you. You're allowing your body to heal you. Rejuvenating those cells in our body so that they can better fight the diseases and depressions and the different little things that are tweaking us. Yeah. Helps them to heal. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like after one session, people are like, wow, I want this. I want more. How long do you recommend for a first, um, uh, what what is your regular breath session? I would, I mean, usually when I take, when I do lead like a breath work class, we do about 30 to 45 minutes of breath work. It's about 30 minutes of active breath Mm -hmm. work and then Mm -hmm. Usually the last 15 minutes is just relaxing yes. and receiving. And so with that, you you will get the benefits mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. And for me personally, it just depends on what I feel called to do. Sometimes yeah. it's like I don't necessarily have the time or space to do the 30 yeah. minutes because it's like stuff comes up and I need time and space to like integrate that yes. after. So it's not something I want to just like cram in. Right. And so some like five or 10 minutes doing the three to four rounds of breath to really just, just like bring your awareness back to your breath, back to your body, because we're so good at disconnecting from our bodies and just being on autopilot, go, go, go. This just brings you back to, back to your heart, back to what's real, back to the present moment now, because that's all we have. And that's where we're creating from is now. So it's so important to know how we're feeling, what's coming up for us if we want to create something different in our yeah. lives. If you know your life is great and you're like, I have everything I could ever want and I feel the best I could ever feel, then yeah, maybe you don't really need to do it very often. Right. But like most of us, no matter how successful you are, there's a new level that you're wanting to yep. reach. And there's yep. new thing, it's a, there's layers of yeah. all of this oh, work, yeah. right? I mean, if I could have it my way, I'd be sitting in my pool doing breath work and listening to, I, I don't know, Alan Watts. But because <laughs> <laughs> there's always a level of, of knowledge that we're going to, right? right. And, 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 when, and just to let the viewers know, when we're saying breath work, we're talking about a continuous flow of... <sighs> And there's different techniques. Some do it through the mouth. Some do it through all the nose. But it right. is a continuous, non-breaking. Yes. yes. Continue to go. Right. Yeah. So, so we are uh, real quick. Let's touch base on your goals for 20, 2021. Yeah. Connection, collaboration, unconditional love, intuition, and trust. Mm. Trust is a biggie. Tell me about your trust goals. Mm. Yeah, (laughs) that one is something I've been leaning more into, letting go of the control and just trusting, like I I am enough, period. There's, it's not about how much I'm doing that's going to get me the results. It's about who I'm being and it's coupled with the action, but it's so about who I'm being and like trusting that's enough Mm -hmm. that I don't always have to be filling like the cracks of time with something yes, else yes. and I can relax and rest and just be and still receive money yes, and all yes. of the like amazing awesomeness and that it's not tied to how much effort that I'm putting into it. Would they classically call that being in the flow? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we talked about being in the present moment and being in the flow and yeah. trust is, I, I am, yeah, we. I think we all understand that word of trusting, live and let God, and turning it over, and being in the flow. And they're like, "Okay, I'm sitting here, I'm flowing. Where is it? It's it's not coming. Where where is it yeah. at? Because we have exactly what we need in that moment, right? Mm. 
Yes, exactly. And that's, that's the trust that we have to say. Yeah, that right? is the trust. Like, yes. Okay, I, I, I really want that Maserati, but the Mustang is all I need right now. Right. Right. right? <laughs> so, and that was very you know, 3D of me to say, but you, 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 you get the illustration. So yeah. I, I love that. And, and I can see the, the glow of everything going on and the, the purple hue of the royalty of the hair and my queen. And yes, the trust is working. <laughs> okay. So I've got a, a funny, quirky little uh, questions that I like to okay. ask and uh you're you're young so you may not remember james lipton in the actor studio i don't okay so it's a series of fun little questions that helps the viewer really understand who you are very quickly okay and in this one we're going to use spirituality as our base cool so i want you to think of your favorite spiritual word Ooh. Alignment. Alignment. Ooh, <laughs> that's a good one. That's meaty. Yeah, I like that one. That, yeah. that works for me too. Yeah. So, what is your least favorite spiritual word? Ooh. I'll give you one of mine. Yeah. I mean, I like it, but I don't like it. Woo woo. <laughs> yes. I, I was just having a conversation at a blessing away for a friend the other day that before I was like, okay, but. I want to rant about that on on social media because I feel like when people say woo woo, it's like oh cuckoo, well, yeah, <laughs> yes. woo woo cuckoo cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> right? And I'm like, no, that's bullshit because yeah. <laughs> if anything, like once we understand energy, it's yeah. like our whole lives can open up and change with so much more ease and less effort. So much more ease and less effort, yeah. and. It feels like it's like a term to like, oh, well, that person doesn't like don't just like they're not credible. That, that, that's like trying to say that the, the great Star Wars is just like this little comic book when you say woo woo. No, it is an epic adventure that changed <laughs> lives. So we don't <laughs> describe Star, Star Wars, Star Trek, any of those as a little story that was an epic adventure and woo woo just doesn't give it justice if you yeah, yeah i'm like yeah. yes I was, how did i forget we were I just talked about this the other day so yeah that would probably be my least favorite term yeah. i had a friend share something actually after i had mentioned that to her um that was talking about the etymology of the word woo woo and that oh it came from woo which was somewhere in the asian culture i don't know if it was china or japan um, Japan, but it was shown at, it was a term used for feminine healers, yeah. shamans. Oh. Yeah. And that's actually where it comes from. And I'm like, oh. Ooh, woman. Okay. I'm like, yeah. yes, that I can I get can behind. Dig. Yeah, I can like, dig that. <laughs> but, and when I saw that, I was like, well, that's really cool. Like, if that's where it's come from, like, I can get that and see how, yeah, you know, things too. have been like slanted and shifted. But I really feel like, we're all coming we're all coming to coming back home yeah. to energy yeah. to the woo like it's it's woo uh, wow people woo wow not woo woo <laughs> <laughs> yes yes <laughs> seriously and i feel like we're like all we're all coming back yeah. to that yeah. really ultimately. absolutely i love that okay so <clears throat> you've had it you've had a really tough day and you've maybe had some wine with some girls some woo woos and <laughs> And you know you've got uh, a ton to do the next day. And when you go to bed, you're exhausted. And you know when you wake up, you're going to have to do something that turns you on. Mm. What is your turn on? Ooh, it's probably a few things. It would definitely be to read, <laughs> read something that's empowering and nice. uplifting for a few minutes. And then gratitude, like writing in my gratitude journal and just Love giving that. thanks for like the day going smoothly. For me, just prioritizing things perfectly, everything getting done in the perfect time with ease and grace and really just like future forecasting like my day. Your alchemy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're stirring your spells and your gratitude and Yeah. And and I'm telling you, I, I've interviewed a lot of people on this show that are very, very successful. And they may not be into the spirituality, right? But they journal every morning, mm. and they're always thankful for what mm. they have. Yeah. yeah. So that is true alchemy in its purest form. Love that. So, what is your turn off? Like some people say, it's arrogance. Um, some people say that it's the Debbie Downer in the room. What is your personal turn off? Probably closed mindedness. Mm. People. Um, who are just like, this is the way, the only way, and they're not open to yeah. hearing or seeing things in any other way. 
And it doesn't mean you have to agree with me sure. or with that person, but just being open to hearing others' perspectives and sides. And appreciating it. Right. Yeah. Instead of just listening to answer, mm -hmm. or like to respond, as opposed to really being present and taking that in and yeah. seeing like, oh, and questioning things. Yes. Maybe, maybe this isn't what I thought it is. Maybe there is another way. Right. Um, so I would say, yeah, the closed mindedness. I like that. Yeah. I, I, me too. Okay, this is a fun one. <clears throat> what is, and we'll bleep this out so that it's a family friendly show. <laughs> what is your favorite <laughs> curse word or swear word? <laughs> <laughs> and you could say it. I will bleep it. I promise. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, probably. F yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you, it's just like it's so universal. Sometimes it's <laughs> and damn and geez, but which I'll have to bleep, bleep, bleep that out. Um, but f is the you know I honestly think that spirit gave that to us because it is so universal. Yes, <laughs> in its expression. It works for when you're excited. It works for when you're upset. <laughs> It works to describe things. It works for when you awesome. want to get, you know, frisky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it works for everything. It does. It does. It's awesome. It's a great word. <laughs> We're going to have a session on and as many uses. You will be invited. Right. Okay. <laughs> It'll be a round table. Maybe some wine. Um, okay. <laughs> so, again, personal space. What noise or sound do you love? Hmm. That just gives you that instant. <sighs> Probably quite quiet silence 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 that that is um it has been used by uh, actually some of my more successful um people that i found on the show silence is that white space right oh it's golden especially with a very active spiritual child that yes <laughs> that has a very open throat chakra yes. um yeah that's awesome uh, so i just oh silence just driving in the car with like no noise being at home like nobody is home it's just like yes i like yes i just love it and i will <laughs> challenge anyone um because that's a really good point if you have an experience or don't know how to experience silence go for a car ride for an hour with nothing on yeah no phone, no music, no nothing, and just drive. Mm. Oh. That'll be your first little taste of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a good spot, right? It is. Yeah. I'm like, it's even just I'm hearing the silence as we're talking. And it's, it's the just chocolate like... chip cookies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what noise or sound do you dislike? Ooh, like nails on a chalkboard or like <laughs> silverware scratching a plate or something. Yeah. Oh, now, the, like, <gasps> yes. When you're at a restaurant and you hear that. It's like, yeah. Oh, wow. oh yeah. That yeah. doesn't sit well with me either. <laughs> okay. So take um, spirituality off the table, um, the uh, psychology off the table. What profession would you have chosen mm. if these were not a choice of yours? Was there something that you thought about being as a child? Yeah. That you would have possibly pursued. For sure. Being a doctor. Yeah. Like, yeah, I thought that was like the only way to help people. And, and I wanted to make the biggest impact. And yeah. so it was like, I'm going to be a doctor. That's what I'm going to do. And you are a doctor, a doctor of the soul. That's what. I, yeah. yeah. And it feels like I have so much more freedom than if I would have been confined to that space mm -hmm. because there's so many regulations and rules about things you can say or not yeah. say and do. I have friends that have left that field to like pursue more of life coaching because like their hands aren't tied. Yeah. And so I, I truly feel like this, because there was a part of me at times where I felt like, oh, wow, maybe I felt disappointed in myself that I didn't stick with that path. Yeah. And it was like, no, because you were never meant to, Nicole. Right. Like, this is what you were meant to do. This yeah. is who you were meant to be because I can be me. Yeah. 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 I love that. Okay. So again, we have to take the, the spirituality out because, you know, a lot of them would choose Mary or Jesus or any of those. A celebrity or famous person, Ooh. dead or alive, that you could have dinner with, who would it be and Ooh. why? Um, probably like who's coming to mind right now is Nikola Tesla. Oh, yes. And I didn't think that's what was going to come up. Interesting. But just to because I know a lot of people looked at him as crazy, right? Yeah. Yet, yeah. What was going through his mind, like through these workings and creating these inventions to Free power? Yeah, yeah, the universe. 
And I would just love to ask, like, what his process was oh. to, like, come oh. to that. <laughs> yeah. I Like, just just sitting there. Like, the, the energy just, you don't even have to talk. Just let me sit here. <laughs> this is great. Where would you take him to dinner? Ooh. Um... Oh, there, I haven't been here in a while, but it just came to mind the salt cellar. Oh my goodness! Yes, the salt. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Oh so god, good. I haven't eaten in there in a long time. That is that is a good one. Yeah. Going down, salt cellar actually is underground. It's, yeah, it's super super cold. Uh, Hayden yep. and McKellips. Yep, that's yes. about where it is. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think he would like that too. Yeah, he'd probably sit there and figure out a way to like light it up or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very cool. I want to ask you one more question because I think it's very relevant Yeah, that Black Lives Matter. Mm. What can we do right now? And I truly feel it's just finding the center of our joy within ourselves because spirit doesn't discriminate. Right. At all. Right. Spirit sees us as beautiful flowers. Yeah. They've created with all these different, that we have created with all of these different colors. There's a lot of people that will be watching and wanting to learn more about spirituality but also about how we can just set aside the racism and make this a better place mm. for the world. Who I'm like, yeah, that's a big question. And you know, I feel like my answer, it's always the same. It's, it's allowing people like their space and their process, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's allowing people to be heard because yeah. I feel like that's that's a lot of what's happening right now. People who haven't maybe spoken up yeah. into how they really felt about things or just allowing, holding space for people to express how they need to express. Yeah. And not getting caught up in the story. Right. That's the biggest thing. It's like allow people to be, but then how can we come together to heal this? Yes. Because without bringing to light what has been in the shadows, and even though you may be somebody that's like, well, I know there's racism, or I'm very aware of this, or maybe you're not, you think racism has been eradicated, it's, we have to bring to light what has been hidden. Right. The feelings, the emotions on doesn't matter what race you are, whatever's right. coming up and allowing that, then we can begin coming together to heal. But when we think people should be over it or if we think people people are victims, that I don't feel like either way is really helping. the. Yeah. A lot of people cause. feel like, you know, uh, OK, they had their say so. And and, you know, now we've got you know, American Indians. There's many different aspects of what yeah. I call 2020 is the great equalizer. Mm, yeah. God has given voice to those trodden down, suffocated children. Mm. And it doesn't go away. It gets louder. Yeah. Until we hear it. Yep. And yes, there are certain beautiful entities that unfortunately will get fed the negativity of it all. Right. Because the outside forces want it to become negative. Right. Because they don't want the voices of the downtrodden to be heard. Right. They want to continue to suffocate. Exactly. And if we think it as the point of they just want to breathe, they yeah. just want to be equal, this is what the world should be. Right. Breath and equality. Yeah, I feel, you know, as well, because I feel a lot of what's happening is people are being looked at as victims, mm -hmm. right? And that doesn't help anybody. No, it doesn't. No matter if anybody has. And this is I'm like, I, this is like a this is a loaded topic. Yes. But, it's allowing, yes, yeah, something happened to people, people that was their experience and seeing them and holding the space in that, but then also seeing that person as they truly are. Yes. Well, it is the spiritual piece of this, like seeing that person as perfect, beautiful, whole and complete mm -hmm. exactly as they are. And how can we all come together and lift each other up? Yes. And yeah. because we can't just... Like, no man left behind is just what yeah, I hear. Yeah, love that. And it's not a just about focusing on one race or this. And it's about, like, there's obviously a disconnect and 
disparaging happening in like yes. all these different areas. Yes. And it doesn't help serve anybody for anyone to feel guilty about it or for other people to feel like they're a victim to the situation right. and there's nothing. Right. And it's like, how can we now educate ourselves to heal the trauma? Because yes. that's what this is. And if you think about anything you've experienced in your life that's been traumatic, you don't just get over it the next day. No. You don't just say it once and, okay, I'm over it, I'm done. Yeah. It, there's layers to it and yes. there's pieces to it and it has to be integrated. And so I feel like that's important is allowing these different layers to come up. Yes. And just see, see allowing. It. allowing. Yes. That's yeah. ultimately what yeah. it is. And let's come together yeah. and be willing to hear each other and just he understand where that person's yeah. coming from. Enjoy the complexities that each individual flower has to offer. Yeah. And the scent that it has. Yes. And I kind of use that flower thing because you're a flower girl. <laughs> I love it. Ashley Judd said something that sticks with me. You can only be a victim once. Mm. After that, you're a volunteer. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is something I've tried to embrace because we do. You know, I can, oh, I'm depressed today and I lost my son in a horrible way. And, you know, there's these things that come up and, right. oh, I'm angry. And no, I was the victim in that moment. But I'm here now. Right. And now I'm going to volunteer to help. Yeah. Yeah. So I have some gifts for you. Oh, okay. yay. I love gifts. That's so, my yeah, love language. 80s, 80s girl. So um, you said, and I, I'm known for my 80s cuts. I used to cut up t-shirts when I was a little girl. So <clears throat> Walking on Sunshine. Because oh, it. It, was, it was the song, right? Um, and I ah. gave it the, uh, so I usually cut the, the, the collars and the edges of the, the, so you can roll them up. And I gave you the classic cut 80s tie on the side. I love you it go. so much. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I did, um, selfishly give you a copy of my book. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so. I have it on Kindle. And so now oh, I, I didn't know. It. Well, then no, you, yes, now then, I have it physically, uh, which I'll, is I'll nice I'll sign it or something. Yes. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> so how do people get a hold of you? How can they uh, use your expertise? Where can they find you? Give us that information. Yeah, so you... Facebook is where I'm most active, but I'm on Instagram too, Nicole Caldwell. It's spelled N-I-C-H-O-L-L-E. Mm -hmm. And then Caldwell, you can find me on both platforms. And my website, www.nicolecaldwell.com. I would love to support you in coming into your own spirituality and incorporating that more into your business, into your life, so you can have more joy, more freedom, more peace, more ease, yes. and more connection to your heart and following your heart so you can make the greater impact that you're here to make. Um, I do so many different free trainings online um, to help you with connecting to your intuition yes. and infusing that into your business so you can be led in your business. And especially if you've been using all these different strategies and it still doesn't feel like you have the results that you want, it's like, how can we now tap into your energy and yeah. use your energy to reach more people with less effort? <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love that. Thank you so much for coming on the Thank show. Thank you for Amazing. This is Kimberly Toko, Tenacious T.